Hello everyone. Yesterday I created a tutorial on how to create curve motion and uh, I promised to create another tutorial on how to do a menu reveal using the same technique. The inspiration is coming from again transforming materials in uh, material design motion section and we're going to be creating or recreating this. So as you can see there is a div uh, which has a circle in the middle of it and uh, basically when it moves over by a means of a click or something it just expands this circle expands and shows the whole uh, area of the division all right all right so let's get started so if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel again go ahead and subscribe if you like this tutorial go ahead and like it and share it so that I can go ahead and create more tutorials like this so uh, we have a top level parent division with the class container and that's pretty much the one that uh, you know is moved down here and that the rest is uh, the rest or the elements that you see are the contents within that container so we have a box, a division with the box, and then inside that we have a div of class menu. So the structure, as you can see, is that there is this, this guy, and within that there is the main div or what we have here as a menu. You can change it to circle if, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I just wanted to make it box following up from my previous tutorial. So this box is pretty much this circle. So on the CSS side of things, it's pretty easy for the container. I gave it a width and height of zero, and then the container it has a position fixed, uh, which brings it down here, and the left and bottom, to and then a transition of all, I mean everything for 0 0.4 seconds, and when I want to click on it, my container, I want it to transform, translate to 7 pixel on x-axis with a transition of 0 0.2. And then the box itself, I want it to have the width and height of 30 pixel, overflow hidden, this is the important part, right? This is the one that hides the whole menu within the box right and then the cursor pointer position relative border radius 50 percent to make it a circle box shadow and transition and then just just to add a little bit of an interactivity visualization so that you know you have to click on this i added and before and after uh, to add these uh, plus icon with one line horizontally and one line vertically the way I did it was obviously when you define an after and before pseudo elements you set the content to nothing width of 10 pixel height 2 pixel background white position absolute and then I use this to center right up until here it's it's centering that uh, pseudo element you know within the container and then I rotated the first one 90 degree, which is this one. And then the after one is actually using this translate without the rotation, which you can create, uh, which you can write to create this uh, plus plus icon. And the reason for that is usually because, you know, one doesn't really want to use any external icon library. So you can pretty much use CSS to create the simple shapes like this and then when I add the container uh, open class I want the box to have a transition of all again and I want it to translate 3d minus 20 pixel and then I use the calc function which calculates a new value so calc minus 120 pixel minus 110 pixel and I will definitely tell you why I did that so the important thing here is that when you scale up the circle 
right? You can't basically use transform function because if you scale this, whatever that is within that, which is that box kind of thing, or in our case menu, will scale up again, right? So if you scale the parent container, everything within that, and the parent container here is the box. So if I use the transform scale, it will scale up this one as well, but I don't want that, right? I simply want my box to become bigger, or in this case circle, I want to become bigger without affecting whatever that is within that. So in order to do that, unfortunately, we can't use the scale property or the scale CSS property of transform. We have to change the width and height. So basically when I click on this, the circle that you know you have here changes the size to 300 pixel and height of 300 pixel. And why then I use this is because half of half of this width and height is 150 pixel, right? Because I want to actually preserve the pivot point to be in the center. So half of the width and height of this is 100 pic, 150 and 150. And then originally, since the box has width of three, 30 pixel and 30 pixel, what you need to do is uh, subtract 30 pixel from the half of this value. So if I would just to be able to center the, to center the, the box here when I click on it, in order to center that, what I need to do is that instead of translating to minus 50%, since I have the width here, I do half of it minus the actual size of my original box, which becomes minus 120 pixel. And I use the same thing, you know, uh, ju just to show you, one, minus 120 pixel again, but I also want to transform the box to minus 110 pixel vertically. So if you have watched my previous tutorial, what I do is that on the container side of things here, I translate X to 70 pixel, and then on Y axis, I want to go 110 pixel, right? So originally, this should be transform, translate Y minus 110 pixel based on my previous tutorial. But since I want to preserve uh, the center or pivot point so that this guy will always be the center of its parent, then I have to actually use translate. Uh, I would write translate 2D or translate, but what I did was to give you a hint of that you can use the translate 3D with Z index zero. So this is my X, this is my Y, and then this is my Z. And the reason why I did that just to show you, you can always use this, it's been told and it's been said that this is more performant in terms of GPU uh, processing uh, that compared to translate, the pure translate function, right? So that's just a tip. You don't need to actually use it. I pretty much can do translate and then remove the Z value, which, which definitely does the same thing. So you can see what happens. This guy moves on a very curvy animation right and then it just expands so the circle itself expands which reveals the whole area of this thing right and when I click again it goes back and for the menu it's pretty simple I need to uh, as always you can see that the container here is kind of the, the menu or the box here is centered right uh, within the parent so you can see that the circle is in the center of that box in order to do that, what, what uh, I did was I just used the position absolute and gave the left and right and top and bottom really, really uh, big values of minus, right? So minus, 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 it just stretches so that it becomes in the middle. And then I used the Z index minus one so that it gets inside you know, my parent container, which is box in this case, right? And then I use like, you know, a little bit of a styling on the UL, list the style, non, you know, I just do a transform, translate Y minus 50, minus five pixel. And when I 
when I do the container open using JavaScript as always, uh, I just change the transformation to become zero. So you can see that, you know, this actually, you know what, it actually maybe should be five pixel. Yes. You'll see that there is a movement on the UL as well. So I don't necessarily recommend using these kind of animations in your UI because not a lot of uh, your users will have is strong computers and some of these animations and techniques since they use GPU for example translate function and transformations uh, it shows differently on different computers right so but I mean it's a very cool one you definitely are free to just do it as long as you know that your users have good computers or your website is targeted for the users that have strong computers, right? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I, as, I, as always, I will put the code in the description menu. And I wish you a great day and night. Uh, all right, have a good day. Bye.